So my name is Robert Kalin, and I live and work in Red Hook, Brooklyn. This is the view out my office desk, some people I work with, and this is the view out my window where I see the Statue of Liberty, and I like that because it puts me in this frame of mind of how uh, I'm always looking in the frame of mind of how people were when they were coming to the United States as land of opportunity. So I'm going to show how lots of little things can be more powerful than big things. Uh, a larger number of small things can be more powerful than a smaller number of large things. There happens to be a children's story that illustrates this very well. It's a children's story of Swimmy. There's one little fish in the sea, and playing with all of his friends. Big fish comes and eats them. He escapes and gets lost, and he's looking for some more of his friends, and he can't find any, and he finally sees some. They're all hiding in the rocks, and he says, come out and play, and they won't because they're afraid. So he says, well, you can't just all hide there all day. We have to think of something. So what is the solution to that? Well, I think the solution starts with uh, our last names. And so many people here, I'm sure, and especially on this slide, uh, our last names come from what we actually made with our hands. And this is in all languages, you know, from bookbinder in German, from someone who, who binds books, to uh, my favorite is Fletcher, was someone who put feathers and arrows. And this is something that we've come so far away from that, you know, we don't even see that what we're making, uh, you know, with our hands has anything to do with our last name or vice versa. And so one of the things I'm trying to do is, is reconnect people in that sense with, you know, your identity is what you make. It's not just you are what you eat, it's you are what you make. And so I started a marketplace called Etsy, which is a handmade marketplace. Everything on Etsy that sold is sold by the person who makes it, so there's no reselling. And the range of goods is, <clears throat> sorry, is huge. Everything from guitars to, to jewelry to clothing to, you know, metal smithing. And the reach of this is gigantic. Uh, you can see in November, of last year alone, over $12 million worth of handmade goods was sold on the site. And so the company is based in Brooklyn, and our business model is that we take a 20 cent listing fee, there's a 3.5% sales fee, and then we run our own in-house advertising program as well. So this has all grown and grown to the point where you know, the biggest goal is to enable people to make their living with what they're doing. But this is really difficult to get to the point from you know, the tipping point beyond just kind of doing this as a hobby to the point of really being able to make a living, which could mean supporting a family, it could mean paying for college, it could mean paying for your kid's college. So how do you get from just doing it as more of a hobby to organizing this to the point where you can actually make a living? So this is kind of a crude model showing what I see is the evolution where you can have you know, these massive companies where everything is central and in order to get to a point where you're doing it in a way that I think is efficient enough, you know, and if you look at nature for examples, if you don't have uh, diversity, you don't have resiliency. And I think that a key part of democracy is having many owners. And so we need to create a system that can recover from that. And the key to creating the system is, in my mind, education. And I think that the educational model out there right now has got it totally backwards to the point where the more I interact with the textbook, the lower it's valued, and especially if I'm selling it back. They actually make these little tape tools that I can rip my comments out of the book. And the more I interact with the web page, the higher it's valued. And that's not just for the sake of advertisers, it's for the sake of the amount of knowledge that's on the page. And so I kind of see these things as two sides of a coin, where Etsy itself is the marketplace, but the other side of that coin is being able to teach people how to learn enough to get to the point where they're able to make a living and to organize to that effect. So again, another example of just how I, broken I think education is in this country is that the cost of education keeps going up and up and up and up, even though the tools to teach, in many cases, keep going down and down. And in my mind, the, the silliest image of this is those little kids with those huge backpacks. Uh, that weigh almost as much as they do, uh, you know, going to, to elementary school. If anyone here has kids, I'm sure they've seen that. Uh, so how do we get from this kind of system that we have now to something that is more organized? And I think that the web is probably the most beautiful and in some cases very subversive tool to be able to do this. And so I've been focusing all of my resources on figuring out essentially how to leverage the web uh, to, to organize all of these people. This is one example of how we're doing it where you can have synchronous interaction on the web with people anywhere they are. And you can do it. My approach is really just kind of allowing people the tools that they need to organize and then letting them use the tools in a framework as they want to use it. And this grows and grows to the point where you're actually creating self-organizing systems where if people want to set up ways to produce things, they can do that locally. And if people want to, to sell locally, you know, we definitely encourage shopping local on Etsy as well. And so the finale of the swimmy story, where all of the fish are hiding, and he says, come out and play, come out and play. Uh, so he says, well, here's my idea. If we all arrange ourselves like some giant fish, and I'm the eye, then we can swim out there in the ocean, and we'll chase all the big fish away. And so that's what the image is, and this is what I'm trying to build with Etsy and with education.